Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Gaming on Caffeine. My name is Isaac, and we are back for episode 8 of Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved Skyblock. Last episode, we were working on automating our gravel sifting system over here, and since the end of last episode, it's done fairly well. I've left it for the most part uh, to do its thing. I've made a few tweaks to the system, uh, including adding this chest over here, like I mentioned, uh, I think at the very end of last episode. I've added another one of these item transfer nodes from X Utilities with an item filter in it uh, to pull out all of the cold diamonds appetite and lapis uh, so as not to clog this up too much it works kind of uh, the hopper seems to be a little bit faster than the item transfer node and so for the most part a lot of the stuff still gets through which is a bit of a pain but uh, if it does get backed up like it's doing right now a lot of the diamonds emeralds and stuff should get pulled out and through it to here however you can see uh, that this chest is pretty full at the moment thanks mostly uh, to the appetite and the lapis we should probably uh, if we want to keep this up put another like compressor here to start compressing up all of the diamond and lapis into blocks but instead what i plan to do today for the first part of today's episode uh, is get a better storage system up and running because as you'll notice as well i upgraded this chest over here to an iron chest and it is already full of ingots as well we got a backlog of stuff now in our redstone furnace and our pulverizer uh, i also added this extra hopper and chest set up at the top here uh, just to give a bit of a buffer between the compressor and the pulverizer because this thing was getting backlogged pretty hard with a bunch of stuff uh, being trapped in here and there were not enough slots in here for the amount of stuff that comes out of sifting gravel and so it's very easy to get backlogged if there isn't a place for all of the gravel loss to go once they've been put uh, into this section. So I added that chest and that hopper to give just a little bit of extra space uh, to the system before we put stuff uh, into the pulverizer. But like I said, that is not uh, the subject of today's episode. The first thing that I want to work on in today's episode after I've killed this skeleton over here. And we have been having a bit of an issue with the tree farm where mobs have been spawning on the treetops. Especially when the, uh, the tree farm gets kind of overrun when there are a lot of trees uh, and it finishes cutting down all the leaves they do spawn on top of the oakwood logs uh, and it's been a bit of a pain but it's been mostly fine i can kill them all off uh, fairly quickly uh, and so what i want to work on today is i want to start by making some storage drawers these are kind of like barrels and they can hold multiple stacks of a singular item depending on which drawer you pick but these are a little bit better than the jabber barrels for the storage system that we're going to create uh, because we have this draw controller over here which i'll get into uh, a little bit later on in today's episode once we set up a few of these oak drawers so the first few i'm going to make uh, are going to be these ones right here they can hold up to 32 stacks uh, of any single item there are upgrades that you can get uh, further on down the line but for now uh, we're going to go ahead and grab some of our oak from in here we are getting quite a bit of oak now as well which is nice as well as keeping our steam boiler full up on charcoal as well and all we have to do is i'm going to make a bunch of those into planks and actually we don't need any logs whatsoever so i'm going to turn all of those uh, into planks i'm going to make a bit of those into chests like so and then we'll go ahead and make a few of these oak drawers like that. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set these up over here like so. I've moved all of my uh, ex nihilo barrels over to there to start producing some dirt using all of the uh, saplings that we're getting uh, from our Steve's Cart's tree farm. And we'll get into why I've got a ton of dirt uh, in the second half of today's episode. But, for now, what we're going to do is we're going to put a bunch of these down all the way around and over here like so. And then we're going to start moving all of our stuff uh, into these. Now, there are multiple different types of storage drawers. The first ones here can only hold one singular item, but they can hold 32 stacks of that singular item uh, there are these ones over here that can hold two different items but can only hold 16 stacks of each item and you'll see each item uh, it kind of has like a smaller area to be shown for example if i put lapis into one of these you can see quite clearly that this is lapis and so all of my important and all of my most used items are going to go in these single storage drawers whereas some of my less used items will probably go into the two storage drawers and then some of my even less frequently used items will go in the storage drawers two by two which can hold up to eight stacks of up to four different items but You'll notice that uh, if we actually go ahead and make one of these which i think we should be able to do uh, fairly easily if we grab again some more of this oak from in here uh, and turn it all into planks we can make some of these four by four ones but you'll notice they have a much smaller area where you can actually see uh, what's in them so i put them down like here for now for example uh, if i was to put lapis into one of the well appetite we have it there into one of those it's still clear this appetite but you can see the graphic is a lot smaller and therefore it's a little harder to find when you've got a lot of them all stacked up together uh, and so my less used items are going to go in drawers like that my most used items are going to go in these bigger drawers like that. And so, what I'm going to do now, guys, I'm going to go away. Uh, I'm probably going to tear down these furnaces, probably move uh, this tool station, maybe even move these chests. I'm probably still going to have some chests because it would take a lot of storage drawers to get one for every single one of my items that we have. We have a lot of items. Uh, so, stuff like, you know, glass pans and slabs and stuff are probably not going to get their own, and, like tool rods, stuff that we don't use very frequently at all. I'm uh, not going to get their own storage drawers. So we'll still have a few chests, but I might move them uh, to somewhere else. But I'm going to go away. I'm going to move all of my most important items, like, for instance, all of our iron 
iron and will get its own storage draw like so. Uh, I might even have to use more than one storage draw for iron because I think we might have more than 32 stacks at this point. Not quite sure, but I'm going to go away. I'm going to sort all of this out and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I'm partway through moving all of my stuff into these oak drawers here, and I run into a problem where I want to move all of my chests, but I don't really want to have to make new chests to go ahead and move all of the stuff out of here uh, by hand and over to the new chests, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the dolly from the Jabber mod. Up until now, uh, this has been a little expensive to make because it does require uh, some reinforced metal here from Steve's Carts 2, uh, but I'm fairly certain that we should be able to make this fairly easily. We need some stabilized metal. Uh, it's a little expensive. We do need a hardened mesh, five iron ingots, uh, and three refined hardeners, and the refined iron hardeners are made using raw hardeners which are made using obsidian and diamonds uh, and so we're going to need a few of those as well as some of, if I can get back to the recipe here real quick, uh, this hardened mesh which requires even more of those refined hardeners which is more obsidian, uh, more diamonds. Thankfully now we have a lot of diamonds so making this thing is going to be fairly easy. It also requires two weighted pressure plates, two sticks and a better barrel, all of which we can make fairly easily and also people tell me that I can use this dolly to actually move all of these machines from Industrial Craft 2 as well and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go away Again, let me quickly get rid of this bucket of water, uh, like that, I guess. We're going to use our unlimited lava sauce over here, get a bunch of obsidian, try and craft up this reinforced metal over here, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so a little while later, whilst I was making all of the reinforced hardeners, and therefore all of the obsidian uh, for the dolly, I realized that we didn't actually have all that much lava uh, stockpiled up, and so what I've got ahead and done is made four more of these crucibles here, hooked them all up to the cobblestone generator, put a lava sauce block uh, beneath them all, and they are now all producing uh, lava at the same rate as this first one, and we're now producing about five times as much lava as we were originally, and so that made getting more obsidian to make these hardeners over here much, much easier, and now we should, uh, if we grab ourselves some iron real quick, I think be able to make ourselves uh, the reinforced iron, and then therefore the rest of this dolly, so we need to get ourselves some stabilized metal, which requires some iron bars, we can then use those iron bars to make the hardened hardener? The hardened mesh, which requires refined hardener, and then we can use that hardened mesh in conjunction with the rest of our stuff, hopefully, to do something like that. Nice. We can then go ahead and smelt up each and every one of those to make ourselves five of these refined metals. We only need one for now, uh, but I'm assuming we can use those in the future for other stuff uh, if we need it. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and smelt it all up because I don't think we can use this. Uh, actually, I'm not going to smelt it up instead because we can, in fact, totally use it uh, to make these lumps of gargadol, which we're definitely going to have to make at some point in the future. So for now, we'll just take the one. We'll come back over to our crafting station. We will quickly craft ourselves up one of these barrels, I think think what we're missing. We are missing slabs, I believe. Let's quickly grab one of those. We also uh, need two of these weighted pressure plates like that. We can then go ahead and make the barrel, like so, and then craft it all together like this. Maybe we're just missing the sticks. We can then grab those and craft it all together like this. And then you realize you didn't actually make the wheels. So once we've got those, we should now be able to go ahead and do something like that. Nice. And for those who are not sure how the dolly works, basically, it allows us to pick up blocks like chests without having to actually empty them out. We do move a lot slower when you have the dolly filled. You get the slowness and mining fatigue two effects over here. Uh, but basically, what I'm going to do now, guys, I'm going to move all of my chests over to here. I think we can move these industrial craft machines. We totally can uh, move those to wherever we want without having to actually break them. And so I'll probably find uh, a new home for those probably over here. Uh, the reason there's a barrel here right now is because I was making some clay to make the extra uh, crucibles. So I'll probably get rid of those, put my three industrial craft two machines over here for the time being. Get rid of these big long wires over there. Finish putting down all of the oak drawers over here. And I'll be back in a second. And a little while later, now that all of our items are nice and tidily packed away into these storage drawers, we can access all of our most regularly used items uh, from all of these storage drawers. But it gets better because, as I mentioned before, uh, there are these items over here, specifically the draw controller, uh, which is going to make our lives even easier. So to make this, we need five cobblestone, two redstone comparators, one uh, two by two storage draw as well as one diamond chipset. Uh, thankfully, most of these are fairly easy to make. The hardest bit, surprisingly, uh, not going to be the diamond chipset. I actually made one of those uh, to fill this draw bit over here. I will, however, uh, start another one of those crafting just because we're definitely going to need uh, another one of those at some point in the future. So I'll throw both of those in there uh, and get those crafting up. The hardest bit is going to be making the redstone comparators because both of these require one piece of nether quartz. And right now, we have no nether portal and no way of getting nether quartz. I'm fairly certain that the nether is going to be a skyblock nether, and I say that with absolutely no idea whether or not that's true. I haven't checked, so I could be completely wrong, but there is a much, much easier way for us to get nether quartz, and that is through sifting soul sand. So, 
We need to make soul sand. The way that we do that is the same way we do it in every other sky block. We need to start with some ancient spores, which I'm fairly certain we have in here. We could take those. We could take some of our dirt, which is currently residing over in this storage drawer. We only need the one. And then all we need to do is stick it down somewhere like here for now. Stick some ancient spores on it. It then becomes mycelium. And then if we put down a barrel from Ex Nihilo, fill it with water next to the mycelium, that water will then slowly turn into witch water, which if you then put sand into it, will turn into soul sand. I feel like I phrased that sentence in a real weird way, but basically the idea is, uh, if we put water into this barrel, it'll turn to witch water. If we put sand into the witch water, it will become soul sand. You can see right at the top there in Wheeler, it is slowly transforming. Uh, it'll take a little bit of time, but not too long. And what I'll do whilst I'm waiting for that is quickly harvest all of this dirt. And the reason why we have all this dirt, by the way, is because after I finished making this draw controller, I want to start on a little bit of Batania. I want to start making some progress in the magic side of things because up until now we have been very tech focused we've done all of the tech stuff uh, in the guidebook here we've actually got all the way down to the bottom of this and i think done everything uh, apart from the end game goals which are of course a uh, very end game uh, and we haven't even started on the magic tree the first quest or the first guided task in the magic tree is to make the pedal apothecary we haven't even started on this side of things at all and so i would like to do that before the world download at episode 10 but before we get to there this thing is almost there it's at 99 100 so let's come and grab a couple of pieces of sand let's stick one of those into here like so that gets us some soul sand and let me quickly start filling that up again uh, because i'm fairly certain we're going to need at least two of these uh, when you sift soul sand you are guaranteed one piece of nether quartz uh, and i believe there is something like maybe a 10 percent chance of getting a second piece of nether quartz if we look over here at the recipe uh, you're guaranteed one and you have a 33 percent chance of getting a second you can also use it to get gas tears and nether ward uh, which means at some point in the near future we are going to have to automate this soul sand creation and sifting system because we are going to need a ton of gas tiers to make all of the galgadorian metal that we need to make some of the late game items but again getting ahead of ourselves there for now let's come back over to the oak sieve i wonder if you can make compressed soul sand i doubt you can uh, but i actually have no idea i haven't checked that either uh, let me have a look here real quick compressed Soul sand? No, you can make normal compressed sand, but it doesn't look like you can actually make compressed soul sand, which I guess is fair. It would be kind of nice, though, if you could do the same thing with the soul sand that you can do with normal sand, gravel, and clay. But apparently not. This is also done. Let's go ahead and grab a second one of those. Bring it back over to our sieve over here. Sift through that. That's going to get us the second nether quartz we need, possibly even the third. It did get us three. And now we can actually go ahead and start making the draw controller. So uh, the redstone comparators are going to need three redstone torches and some stone. I started smelting some stone up before uh, it is over here in this chest we did run into a slight issue uh, with our ingots you'll see in here there were quite a lot of ingots and that's because the copper ingots that we get from this system over here are not the same copper ingots that we get from the smeltery we get tinga's construct copper ingots from the smeltery and thermal expansion copper ingots from this setup that we have over here and so a lot of the ingots that we were using uh, in the chest that used to be over here don't fit into these barrels because they're different kinds of copper and so uh, for the time being they're going to sit in there We'll probably like slowly use all those up and then move on to using these ones but again that's kind of getting a bit sidetracked let's come back uh, and grab ourselves some of this so we can make ourselves some sticks we can then use those sticks to make ourselves some redstone torches let's grab at least uh, four of you come back in here grab four of those and i think that's probably the hardest part done we can go ahead and hopefully make two of those we can't because we are missing more redstone torches oh yeah we need three okay let's grab uh, i guess more redstone and then make ourselves some more of those redstone torches two more should be enough that takes up to three of those that allows us to make ourselves the second redstone comparator and at that point all we need is the draw the chipset and the cobblestone the chipset we have in that draw but also now because of all the waffling we've done uh, in this chest the draw we have one spare in here and the cobblestone of course we can grab from pretty much anywhere i'm just gonna take one of those and turn those into cobblestone and by one i of course mean three because apparently you cannot pull them out one at a time uh, from the compressor but that allows us to make the draw controller. Nice. Now, you're wondering, Isaac, why did you make that draw controller? What could it possibly do that upgrades this system that we have already? And basically, what this allows you to do is, if it's connected to a storage draw, which is connected to other storage drawers, uh, you can input stuff into this controller, and it will automatically put it into the correct slot uh, in this, like, draw system that we have here. So, for example, we have some redstone. Uh, I will find a slot for nether quartz, actually. I'll probably put it in place of these electron tubes. We only have five of them, but I kind of wanted to fill it up so i'll put another quartz in there 
But if, for example, we pull out a bunch of this stuff here, like just randomly grab a bunch of stuff, uh, preferably not enough stuff to actually empty a drawer out like we did just then. Let's put the redstone uh, back in there. But if we pull out a bunch of random stuff like this, uh, and then we want to put it all back in, it's going to take me a little bit of time to actually go through and right-click on all of the chests that I want to put stuff back into. Whereas with the draw controller over here, I can just double-click on the draw controller, like so, and it will put everything in my inventory that has an associated draw with it directly back into its original slot you have to make sure you do it on the front there uh, i just tried to do it on the side it doesn't work if you do it on the front though double right click it will go ahead and dump all of the stuff in your inventory into its correct draw and also what you can do is you can pipe directly into this draw controller and it will automatically sort all of the items into their correct draw as well and so what i will end up doing at some point in the near future is setting up a pipe that goes from this iron chest out around and into the draw controller so that we can put all of our ingots automatically into these drawers and so we don't end up with a backlog system over here and i'll do the exact same thing with with this chest over here so that all of our diamonds call lapis emeralds and appetite also get pumped around and end up in the storage draw collection which is going to help with the automation and mean that i don't have to manually move everything from this system over to this system which is pretty cool so now that that's out of the way and we have this all up and running i want to start working on a little bit of batania and when i say batania i kind of mean agricraft because to get started with batania we're going to use agricraft so uh, the first thing that we need in batania is some floral fertilizer and to get the floral fertilizer uh, we need either bone meal and then four of any colored floral powder or we need bone meal and then two dandelion yellow and two rose red we're of course going to go with this one down here to start with because we cannot get any petals without the floral fertilizer but we can get dandelion yellow and rose red now the normal way that i would get it is i would go ahead and put a grass seed down on this dirt over here wait a little while until the grass spread use some bone meal on the grass hope that one of the uh, the grasses that grew out of the grass was uh, either a poppy or a dandelion and then pick up that poppy or dandelion line turn it into rose red or dandelion yellow and then craft it up to make some floral fertilizer but AgriCraft implements a much better way of getting a lot of rose red and a lot of dandelion yellow and it comes through the poppy seeds and the dandelion seeds these guys over here so basically you can grow rose red and dandelion yellow but to do it we need to first mutate sugarcane seeds with pumpkin seeds and to do that we're first going to need some pumpkin seeds and some sugarcane seeds I don't think we have either of them right now we have a few seeds we got some cactus seeds some grass seeds I'm fairly certain we have some melon seeds lying around somewhere yeah we have some up here and some normal wheat seeds but we don't have sugarcane seeds or pumpkin seeds thankfully they are both super easy to get all we have to do to make those is sift some dirt and so what i'm going to do real quick here is i'm going to take this dirt uh, i'm going to go ahead and compress it up you do lose it's a bit less efficient uh, to compress it up and then sift it but it is a heck of a lot faster than doing all 43 by hand in the normal oak sieve i'm going to sift through these real quick to see if we get some sugarcane seeds and some pumpkin seeds we didn't we got more melon seeds and more grass seeds if we don't get any uh, i'm going to go away i'm going to get some more of my saplings make some more dirt over there and sift through that dirt over and over again until we get some sugarcane seeds and some melon seeds we did not get anything that we wanted and so i'm gonna go away i'm gonna make a bunch more dirt i'm gonna sift it all up i'll be back in a second once we have some sugarcane seeds and some pumpkin seeds and we could also do with a sod at some point and quite a bit of dirt sifting later we now have some pumpkin seeds and some sugarcane seeds so uh, first things first let me throw away all of these stones because i do not need any of them i have to like periodically get rid of all of the stones in my inventory because you get way too many from uh, sifting dirt in this mod pack and I, I say that as a bad thing but usually it's a good thing to get to the stones uh, especially early game but i really do not need them also uh, we have way too many saplings to, uh, to, to to fit in the storage drawer over here we'd have to assign multiple slots just to saplings in order to fit them all in but that's beside the point we have one uh, and that works fine so now we've got ourselves the sugarcane seeds and the pumpkin seeds we're going to first of all go ahead and craft these up uh, into agri-craft versions i don't think it matters for pumpkin seeds it doesn't and we're also going to need to get ourselves some sticks so that we can make some crop sticks so uh, let's go ahead and grab another stack of oak planks here and let's first of all make uh, a bunch of sticks the way you make crop sticks fairly simple four sticks in a crafting table shaped recipe get us some crop sticks and we're also going to need to make ourselves uh, a hoe i think we can still make a vanilla hose possibly in this mod pack we cannot okay so it turns out we can't make normal hose and so instead what i'm going to go ahead and do is make myself uh, a mattock from tinker's construct which for those who are unfamiliar with is a mix between a flint axe head so an axe and a shovel 
but also works as a hoe. I'm not quite sure how the logic follows there, but it does work. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put you there. We're going to put you there. Uh, we can put a stick on the bottom for now, like so. That's going to get us a matic. It's only a flint one, uh, really low tier. We could probably make a better one using our smell tree if we wanted to, but this will do the job for now. And so what we can do is go ahead and right click to till the ground here. And now uh, if we throw down one crop stick here, one here, and then two in the middle, uh, this is the basic setup for breeding crops with AgriCraft. So basically the way it works is we take the two crops that we're going to breed together, stick them down on either side like this and like this. The reason that one didn't work is because for sugarcane seeds, you have to use sand and not dirt. So let me come back over here real quick, grab some sand and replace this one. And once they're fully grown, uh, they will occasionally start to breed crops and place them in the middle. Now, uh, it's not... Oh, I was hoping I'd get that. I did cool stuff. <laughs> that was... Okay. Okay, some of you are gonna be uh, gonna be saying Isaac that was like the most obvious mistake ever You've played Minecraft for way too long now. How did you not know that was gonna happen and to that? I say well flipping Shut up. Okay, <laughs> what we're gonna do. Let me go ahead and uh, quickly do something like this I let me put a bit of a cobblestone platform underneath like that and then pick the water back up Now we can put the sand down and the crop sticks and the sugarcane uh, And if we go ahead and quickly make some bone meal and start growing these up I think shift right click uh, will allow us to bone meal these it totally will uh, Remember to shift right click if you don't shift right click uh, they won't grow and you'll see that we got poppy seeds That was actually super lucky. Uh, I did this a few times in a testing world and uh, it, it occasionally you'll get like just more pumpkin seeds or you'll get maybe some sugarcane seeds i don't think you can get sugarcane seeds because it's dirt uh, but occasionally you'll just get more pumpkin seeds and stuff like that but if you're lucky they will mutate together and you'll actually get poppy seeds nice so now the reason i've done this is because what we can do is we could use bone meal i'm not going to use bone meal instead i'm going to use the appetite and sand trick that i showed you a few episodes back to make a bunch of fertilizer and i'm going to use that fertilizer instead of bone meal to actually get a ton of rose red using these poppy seeds so if we go ahead and do the same thing here we shift right click on these they will grow up into poppies which we can then right click and we get rose red nice And so we can use this to get a ton of rose red and we'll use the exact same method to get a ton of dandelion yellow Which we can then use in conjunction with our bone meal Which we saved thanks to the fertilizer here to make a bunch of botanical fertilizer Which we can then use to get into botania a little bit And so what we need to do now is the exact same thing uh, But this time to get the dandelion seeds and for this we need sugarcane seeds and melon seeds And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the exact same thing But on the other side here we'll have the one slot in the middle for the crop breeding and the one slot for the watermelon seeds you want to make sure you put the two crop sticks in the middle watermelon seeds on the left like so uh, again we could either bone meal or use the fertilizer i might as well use fertilizer because we have it and then after a little bit of time this should go ahead and transform into some kind of crop and you'll see that this time around we got more melon seeds that's fine it's just a trial and error game at this point we're going to do it again and this time we got dandelion seeds nice so just as like before we can go ahead and make those grow into some nice dandelions and now we have a nice unlimited source of dandelion yellow and rose red without using any of our grass seeds to make grass and without using a ton of bone meal to actually grow that grass uh, into grass seeds and then trying and hoping that we get dandelions and poppies and most importantly this is going to make us a lot more than the one flow of fertilizer that we would get from like the one or two uh, dandelions and poppies that we'd usually get uh, from grass and bone meal and the whole point of this is it's long term we don't have to use any of our uh, botania flowers to make more botanic fertilizer we can just use these poppy seeds and these dandelion seeds pretty much forever and ever and ever to make a ton of these and also when we get later on down the line uh, in the agri-craft kind of like tech tree i guess we can start to mutate these even more uh, to make them better at growth and make it so that we get more dandelion yellow and rose red every time that we grow these but again that's further on down the line for now uh, what we need to do is get at least two of each of these so again one more of those like that and once we got both of those we can come back over to our crafting station craft them up in a fashion like so it's two of these two of these and one of these i think the recipe is shapeless so you can put these wherever you like that gets us floral fertilizer which we can then use on the remainder of our dirt like so to get ourselves some botania flowers nice and so what i'm gonna do now guys i'm gonna go away and i'm gonna get rid of i guess these these and these for now uh, we could also by the way in fact let me go ahead and quickly just dump uh, these away and let me get rid of all the rest of the stuff here what i'll probably do is actually no i was gonna say we could get more of these just like we did with the breeding just there we got more melon seeds we can do the exact same thing uh, with the seeds here for example if i put down these crop sticks like this and then give them some fertilizer like so they should eventually i think transfer over these dandelion seeds here should transfer over 
into this and we should get more dandelion seeds so we could use that to get more and more uh, but i think to be fair we don't really need more than the one because i can just sit here and get as much dandelion yellow as i want from this one set of dandelion seeds instead of having multiple of them and so what i'm gonna do now guys i'm gonna go away i'm gonna get a bunch of dandelion yellow a bunch of rose red craft it up into a bunch of floral fertilizer get a bunch of botania flowers i'll be back in a second and a little while later, we now have quite a few of each of these Batania flowers, and so uh, we can actually start to move in to Batania itself. So, uh, if we open up the guidebook here, the first mana quest line uh, tells us to make the Petal Apothecary. So to make that, uh, again, if we look in there, it tells us actually we need two cobblestone slabs, uh, three double compressed cobblestone, a petal of any kind. It shows a brown one here, but I'm pretty sure you can use NA, uh, as well as a cauldron. Now, uh, I'm going to type it in here, because it's a lot easier to actually see what we need. Uh, over in here, uh, the first things first, three double compressed cobblestone is going to be super duper easy, because we have a ton of compressed cobblestone up in this first compressor and uh, we can go ahead and just take 57 of those come over to our crafting station do something like this and that easily gets us the three double compressed cobblestone that we need we can then take the rest of these and we could try and put them back in the system but the system's kind of a bit of a pain like that uh, it's all filled up to the brim so i'm just gonna actually just throw the rest of this uh, off the edge there and, and not worry too much about it because we have a ton of cobblestone and uh, next thing on the list that we need is of course a petal of any kind to get that we need to craft in any of our flowers uh, in the crafting table well, I'm going to use the one we have the most of, which is this gray flower here. Gets us two gray petals. And then finally, the last thing that we need is a cauldron, which requires seven of these iron plates. Uh, I went ahead and put some of those into the metal farmer uh, a few seconds ago. We now have nine of those. So if we do something like this, we can get ourselves a cauldron. Nice. We can then go ahead and use that in conjunction with the rest of our stuff, apart from the cobblestone slabs, which we can make fairly easily like so. We can get ourselves a petal apothecary nice now for now i'm going to set this up over here eventually i uh, will have like a dedicated area for britannia because this right now uh, is not really what i would class as a dedicated area but it will work for the time being uh, and the way that this works is the petal apothecary is used to make flowers and the way that we do that is we put water into the petal apothecary as well as a certain combination of other items followed by a seed and it will craft us up that flower so the first flower we're going to make is the first flower you always make uh, with britannia and that is the pure daisy this guy over here to make that we need four white mystical flowers in the petal apothecary uh, with that seed and that will get us a pure daisy so uh, first things first let's craft up these uh, into the white petals the server has closed because it's scheduled to close every couple of hours i'll be back in a second and one quick server restart later, we can go ahead and drop all of these mystical white petals into the petal apothecary like so. Once we've got all four, all we need to do is grab a seed. I believe you can use any kind of seed. I usually use uh, just the vanilla Minecraft seed here. Throw it in like so. Boom. And you get yourself the flower you want to make. In this case, the pure daisy, which we can now go ahead and plant down on a piece of dirt somewhere. I... Uh, I'll, I'll put it here for now again I want to move all this stuff at some point and have like a dedicated Britannia area but for now we'll have it here and basically what the pure daisy does is it allows you to make living rock and living wood and the way that we do that is with stone and with some oak logs so let's quickly come over here and not grab any oak logs because I moved them all over into here let's grab a stack of those and throw them down around the pure daisy like so and I believe it takes about 60 seconds for the wood to turn from normal wood into living wood you'll know it's working when you see these little particle effects coming off of all of the oak i also have some stone in this chest over here from earlier uh, in today's episode and basically what i'm gonna do now guys i'm gonna go away i'm gonna wait until this turns into living wood which actually shouldn't take too much longer uh, i'm then gonna make a bunch more living wood as well as a bunch of living rock and i'll be back in a second And a little while later, what I've ended up doing is making a second one of these pure daisies so that we can have one dedicated to making the living rock and one dedicated to making the living wood. And now that we've got 16 of each, we can actually start to get into the bulk of Britannia. Uh, and that starts with the day bloom. Again, if we go back to the guidebook over here, uh, down to first mana, the next thing in the quest line after making uh, some living rock and some living wood is to make a diluted mana pool and a day bloom. And basically, what we're going to do is we're going to start creating mana, which is kind of like the power source uh, of Britannia. And we're going to do that... Uh, using the day bloom so much like we did with the pure daisy we're going to make the day bloom over here in the petal apothecary and if we look here in nei the way that we make a day bloom is very similar but this time we use two yellow petals one light blue petal one orange petal and again a minecraft seed so let's get two yellow might as well go ahead and get four yellow uh, we'll get ourselves some light blue 
blue, we'll get two light blue, and we'll get ourselves some orange, I think it was, as well, like that. That should be enough to make us two dare blooms. So, what I'm going to do now is we're going to go ahead and grab some water again real quick from our unlimited water sauce over here. Eventually, uh, we will get an unlimited water sauce specifically for Britannia as well, but for now, we'll stick that there. We'll go one, two, three, four, and again, some normal seeds. I do not yet want to use these. What I'll do instead is quickly grow... Oh my goodness, we're running out of inventory space so quick. Uh, instead, what I will do is I will quickly grow some more of these wheat seeds so that we can actually go and start to make... Oh my goodness, let me let me get rid of some of this junk. We need to get uh, a flower pouch to hold all of these flowers because they are creating a massive mess in my inventory. But right now, we don't have any wool. Uh, basically, a flower pouch will hold all of the flowers in like one inventory slot uh, instead of in like 50. But uh, we don't have any wool, so we can't currently make the flower pouch. But I'm pretty sure we can do this. Uh, get ourselves some more wheat seeds, throw them in there. Boom, and that gets to that first day bloom. We can then do the exact same thing again. And uh, fun fact, what you can do is if you put the water in, if you're making multiple of the same flower in the Petal Apothecary, you can put your water in, right click on the Petal Apothecary with an empty hand, and it will put in, if you have all of the stuff required in your inventory, it will automatically take it out, put it into the Petal Apothecary, and then all you have to do is get yourself one more seed like so. Throw it in once you've got it, and boom. We get another day bloom. Nice. Now, again, for now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take down this pure daisy because we need a little bit of space to put down our day blooms. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all of this and pick you up for now. We're probably not going to need more than 24 living wood throughout the course of today's episode. And basically, the way that these work is they kind of work like solar panels. If I put them down here and here, these things will start generating what is known as mana from the sunlight. They'll just turn the sunlight directly into mana. Uh, you've got to be careful. You can't put them directly next to each other. If you do, uh, they won't work. And so you want to make sure they're spread out. Uh, and maybe crisscross so we could put one there, but we couldn't put one here or here. And in order to see how much mana is inside of these day blooms, we are going to need a wand of the forest. Now, to make a wand of the forest, if we go ahead and take a look in NEI here, we're going to need three living wood twigs, which are made using two living wood like so. We then need two Britannia petals. It doesn't matter which two petals you choose. It just affects what color the wand is. It doesn't have any other kind of like properties uh, or effect on the wand itself. I am going to use uh, this one because we have the most of them. We are going to have a lovely magenta wand here like so. And now, if we go over to our day blooms, we can right-click on it with the wand. Right now, it says unknown status. If we right-click, it shows us that they are full on mana. These are storing as much mana as they could possibly store, and so are not making any mana right now. But you'll see at the end there, there's a little cross through what looks like some living wood, but that is, in fact, not living wood. That is a mana spreader. And what a mana spreader does is it allows us to take mana out of the flowers that generate them, such as the day bloom, and send them to a mana pool, which is what we're going to use to store that mana, kind of like an energy cell, uh, if you're looking at it in a power sense, uh, to make a a mana spreader all that we need is six of these living wood with a golden ingot and again any kind of petal this time it really doesn't matter which kind of petal you have uh, it doesn't even affect the color of the mana spreader we are going to use again light gray because we have it lying around do something like this and there we go we get a mana spreader nice so what we need to do now is stick down the mana spreader near to the flowers that are generating the mana i'm going to put it here for now just for convenience i'm then going to go ahead and put the mana pool down uh, in the line of sight of the mana spreader it doesn't really matter if you put it somewhere else you can change where the mana spreader shoots to if you put like for example the mana pool down over here we could then get our wand of the forest shift right click into function mode you'll see the bottom there it's in bind mode now it's in function mode and in function mode you can right click you can shift right click on a mana spreader and then shift right click on where you want it to go and it should point towards that it's not are we in bind mode like that. There we go. I'll now point to where it needs to go. Uh, we want to be in bind mode, not function mode. We do want to be in function mode uh, in order to see what's going on in here. And now we need to go back into bind mode so that we can shift right-click on a day bloom, bind it to a mana spreader, and you'll see now that little box on the end is ticked. And now if we right-click, you will see that the day bloom is out of mana and is sending it over to the mana spreader, which you'll see is very slowly getting mana. This shows how little mana uh, the day blooms actually produce. They do not produce a lot at all. Uh, this one as well, we can go ahead and shift right-click and then right-click again and bind that one to this as well. And uh, once this gets enough mana, it will go ahead and a burst of mana from the mana spreader over to the mana pool over here. Uh, I am going to move this real quick before the first burst comes through because I kind of want it to be uh, right about there. Let's again just bind you to that. Uh, and then this should send it through. Now, there is an issue, or not an issue, there's a, just a feature with the day blooms because they are considered passive mana generators. And in newer versions of Britannia, uh, with passive flowers that generate mana passively, uh, they will decay after a certain amount of time. And so I took a quick look into the config, and these flowers are set to decay after about an hour. So after about an hour of real world time, 
uh, these flowers here will just turn into like withering they will either disappear or they will wither away into flowers that we can no longer use and so what we need to do is we need to create some kind of active flower that generates mana when it's given fuel instead of these passive flowers that generate mana uh, without any kind of fuel there's those include the day bloom and the nightshade and possibly some more but i'm not quite sure the ones i know of are the day blooms and the nightshade the nightshade works in exactly the same way as the day bloom but you guessed it it works at night instead of during the day uh, and so what we're going to do is if we can look in the guidebook over here and go down a little bit we're going to make this guy here the end of flame which is kind of like a, a standard generator from any tech mod uh, in that you can give it fuel and it will use that fuel to generate mana which you can of course then send to the mana spreader and through to the mana pool uh, so if we look up the recipe for the end of flame this guy over here to make this we need two brown petals one red petal and one gray petal and we also need one of these mana powders here uh, and this is the reason why we didn't make this first because to get this we need to put one gunpowder into a mana pool and so we need a little bit of mana uh, before we can make the end of flame that's where the day blooms come in you have to kind of make uh, either those or the nightshades before you can get involved in anything else but what we can do now is grab a gunpowder i don't think we're gonna have enough mana in here just yet to actually make the uh, the mana dust that we need to make the end of flame you can see there it's it needs a little bit but we have like even less if we look at it with our one of the forest we're almost there uh, so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go and sleep so the day blooms can get back to work and i'll be back in a second once we've got enough mana to make the mana dust and a couple of bursts from the mana spreader later. We can now throw our gunpowder into the mana pool and we get ourselves a mana powder, which we can now use to make the end of flame. So once again, let's come back over to here. Let's quickly grab uh, some water. I say quickly, but we're moving exceptionally slowly because we are hungry right now. Uh, so let's rather slowly walk back over to our petal apothecary, throw in our mana powder as well as one gray, two brown and one red. Yep, that gets to the end of flame. So all we need to do then is again, bone meal this a little bit until we get some wheat, craft that wheat into a wheat seed and then use that wheat seed to get an end of flame nice and now this like i said before works in a fairly similar way to a generator all we need to do is it gets some kind of fuel i'm going to use some oak planks for now but we could use uh, coal charcoal blocks of coal all kinds of stuff uh, saplings if you wanted to uh, and we could throw this down onto here and what it's going to do is every so often it's going to take one of those planks and then use that plank to generate some mana you'll see that the mana spreader is sending mana over to the mana pool much more frequently now than it was before and we are gaining mana much faster than we were previously and now the final thing that we need to do in the guidebook here to finish the first mana mana section of the guidebook here is make ourselves one of these mana steel ingots we can make it in two ways we can either use normal iron or we can use steel i'm going to go ahead and try and use normal iron if we can but if we can't uh, i will take one of these refined iron ingots just in case and uh, so we can go ahead and make those the steel version costs a little bit less uh, in terms of mana but does cost a little bit more obviously to make uh, i'm hoping we can use refined iron we can and boom, there we go, that gets us mana steel, which we can then use for a multitude of different things. We can make tools with it, we can make armor with it, we can make runes with it, and all kinds of stuff uh, as part of Britannia, which we'll look into later on down the line. But with that, guys, I'm going to end this episode of Feed the Beast Infinity Vault Skyblock there. Next time, we'll come back, we'll probably work a little bit more on the next section of the Magic Guidebook here, which is Thormcraft, and maybe even a little bit of Witchery as well, because I don't think there's a whole lot to do uh, in terms of the Thormcraft side of things, at least not early game, uh, in this mod pack, if I remember correctly, from the uh, non-Skyblock version of this pack. But as I said, for now, guys, thanks for watching. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit like. It really does help out a lot. Leave a comment down below, and I will see you guys next time. Yeah.